Hello, friends, and welcome back to Malicious Compliance Stories. Let's dive into the story of a determined Karen who just couldn't resist sticking her nose where it didn't belong. But before we dive in, make sure to hit that subscribe button, smash the like if you enjoy the content, and ring that notification bell so you never miss a juicy story. Entitled Karen doesn't believe I have surgery. This happened about 10 years ago. I was 22 at the time and had to have knee surgery to clear out shredded cartilage about a week after my birthday. This story takes place three days after the surgery. My mom, a nurse, important for later, my husband, BF of two years at the time, and my best friend decided to take me shopping to try and get my mind off the surgery and to pick up craft supplies so I would be bored while off of work. I should mention it was an orthopedic surgery, so I didn't need to use crutches if I didn't feel the need and should be walking some. When we got to the craft store, not our first stop, my husband and best friend made me use one of the store's wheelchairs. I was being stubborn because I could still walk, just not very fast or as long without brakes. Since I really didn't want to be in the chair, husband and friend decided to make a game out of it. Like, who could push me the fastest? Now you might think we're wrong, but let me state this was in the middle of the day on a Monday, so the store was not busy and my husband and best friend would check the aisle to make sure that the coast was clear. After one of these speeding events, I was looking at something in an aisle and my mom pulled husband and best friend away to look at something. It was something she thought I would like and was going to get it as a surprise. Well, I decided I didn't want whatever it was that I was looking at and stood up to put it back. This is when Karen appears, berating me for using the wheelchair as a toy, and now there are people who actually need it. I am calmly explaining, I just had surgery and that's why I'm using it. She then goes on and on about how she saw what my friends were doing and that I'm obviously lying. I explained that they were trying to make me feel better, and I would tell them to push me normally from now on. This did not appease Karen, and she's still berating me. At this point, I roll up my pant leg and show her the compression bandages I'm still wearing. She goes on about how that means nothing, and I could have just wrapped my knee as an excuse in case we were caught. And she bet the other people with me also have their knees wrapped. My group returns at this point and says the same thing as me, Karen's still not having it, and we're all lying. I look at my mom and ask if I can take off my bandages as they were supposed to be removed the next day. She says I really shouldn't, but she could rewrap it for me if needed. At this point, I take off the bandages before anyone can stop me showing Karen my knees and all its post-surgery glory. It was bruised, swollen, and crusty at the incision sites, and you still see the iodine on my skin. Karen's face goes white, and she looks like she's going to be sick. She starts stammering about how I didn't need to go that far as my mom is rewrapping the knee, scolding me and Karen under her breath. I look at Karen and say, what else do you want me to do? I told you, they told you, I showed you the bandages. You wouldn't get off your high horse and insisted we were lying. At this point, a staff member comes to check if we need any help and Karen runs for the door. We had a pleasant rest of our day and stopped for ice cream on the way home. She just knew that if she badgered you all enough, you'd eventually cave and admit to being what she accused you of being. She got mad you showed her that because it made her look stupid, not because she was offended or grossed out, even though I'm sure she was also those things too. And our second story. Woman complains about overpriced goods and ruins a great deal for herself. I work at a thrift shop where most items are priced based on quality and condition, but we do have set prices for certain items. One of those items is Monster High Dolls. We get them pretty often, so the general rule is that each doll goes out for $5. If it's in bad shape or missing pieces, it's $4, and if it's fully clothed with accessories, it's $6. This pricing standard is consistent across all of our locations. I've had customers ask why these dolls are more expensive than our Barbies or other dolls, and I usually explain that Monster High dolls offer articulated joints and are popular for customizing. Usually, once I explain, customers understand why the dolls are on the pricier side. Well, not this lady. She brought about 10 dolls to the register and immediately asked my cashier for a manager, me. She asked why the dolls were so expensive, so I explained our pricing structure, thinking she'd understand. 
But no, she insisted that other stores sell these dolls for $3 and even claimed to have found one in the package with extra accessories for only $8. I told her that without proof I couldn't honor such a reduced price, but I did offer her $5 for a couple of her $6 picks due to minor imperfections. That was about two weeks ago, and I assumed that was the end of it. But I was so wrong. This lady came back about a week ago saying she was so glad to catch me again because she had something to show me. I got a little excited, thinking she might show me her collection or a doll she had customized. She brought all my expectations crashing down when she showed me pictures of Monster High dolls from other locations priced at $3 across the board. I was so surprised I just stared. She had this smug look on her face and told me, See, your dolls are maybe just a little overpriced. With how snotty her voice was, it took everything in me to stay civil as I told her I'd speak to the store manager to clarify our pricing. She walked away thinking she'd won, and I walked away feeling a bit defeated. The next day, when the store manager was in, I asked him if we had a set price for Monster High dolls. He confirmed that we did, and together we reviewed the pricing standard for dolls. We even went out onto the sales floor to ensure we were on track with our pricing. Since we've never had to recycle a single Monster High doll for not selling, we decided there was no need to lower our prices. Just today, the store manager approached me as I started my shift, grinning from ear to ear. He had a story to tell me. Apparently, the lady had gone to another location in our city and complained about our horribly overpriced dolls to the cashier, who brought the manager over to discuss it. She told them they should talk to that other store and see about lowering our prices a notch, so the manager did what any good manager would do. She followed up and reviewed the pricing standard for these dolls. To her horror, she discovered that their store was in the wrong, they were practically giving these dolls away, and the pricing standard wasn't even posted at the tables. So the pricers had no idea they were pricing things incorrectly. She immediately emailed our store manager with their findings and asked for our thoughts, my store manager told her that he and his team had encountered the same lady and recommended reviewing the standards with her team so they could price correctly. He then CC'd the email to the district manager, who later that night rolled out a directive about following pricing standards more thoroughly across all departments to prevent customers like her from trying to undermine us like that again. So basically, this lady completely destroyed a really good deal for herself by raising a stink about the overpriced dolls at the other store. She's going to be in for a nasty surprise the next time she visits and finds all the dolls are now appropriately priced. She didn't just ruin a good deal for herself, but anyone else that benefited from the price mistake in the general location of that store. And our last story. You're not a veteran, you're a woman. I've asked my friend Belle, a retired army officer, for more stories, and she delivered this lovely gem. Several months after retiring from the army, Belle was still living in the town where she had last been posted. She and her husband, Adam, were planning to host a party, so Belle headed out to a local store to pick up some last-minute items. Being a retired officer, Belle had veteran plates on her car, and she took advantage of the veteran-designated parking spot near the store entrance. As Belle stepped out of her car, she was immediately confronted by a woman who seemed to appear out of nowhere. This was Karen, and she was not happy. What are you doing here? Karen demanded, her voice dripping with disdain, wearing your husband's rank. Belle was momentarily confused. Excuse me? Karen wasn't about to let her off easy. You're not a veteran, you're a woman. Move or I'll have you towed. She seemed to be in full attack mode, her hands gesturing wildly as she spoke. Belle, who had faced far worse in her military career, wasn't about to be intimidated. Nope, she replied simply, turning her head into the store. But Karen wasn't done. She reached out, trying to grab Belle's arm, but Belle's reflexes were still sharp. She smoothly avoided Karen's grasp and continued on her way, hoping that would be the end of it. As she walked away, she couldn't help but pity the poor person this woman was married to, assuming she had a husband. Belle did her shopping and headed home, thinking the encounter was nothing more than a weird, isolated incident. But when she got home, Adam greeted her with a question she wasn't expecting. Have you seen Facebook today, he asked, holding his phone out. Nope. Why? Belle asked, curious. 
Adam handed her the phone, showing her a post from a local military spouse support group. There, in black and white, was Karen's handiwork. She had stalked Belle through the store, taking pictures of her without her knowledge, and then posted a lengthy, angry rant. Karen accused Belle of wearing her husband's rank, claimed she had taken the place away from a deserving veteran, and ended with a dramatic, My husband and I have to put up with this crap, among other colorful accusations. Belle just shook her head, rolling her eyes at the absurdity of it all. There was no point engaging with the post. She had a party to prepare for. She pushed it out of her mind and focused on the evening ahead. That night, guests began arriving at their home, filling the place with laughter and conversation. Among the guests was a major that Belle had mentored during her last posting. They greeted each other warmly, catching up on life since Belle's retirement. Then, the Major turned to introduce his wife, who had been standing nearby, slightly out of view. Let me introduce you to my wife, Karen. Karen, this is Belle Smith, my former general. Belle turned to greet Karen, and the recognition was instant. Karen's face drained of color as she realized who Belle was. This was the same woman she had berated in the parking lot, the same woman she had publicly slandered on Facebook, and now standing in front of her was not just any veteran but a retired general, Belle Smith. The room seemed to hold its breath as the awkwardness settled in. Karen was clearly mortified, and Belle couldn't help but enjoy the poetic justice of the moment. She didn't need to say anything. Her rank, her experience, and the respect she had earned over her career spoke volumes. Karen, on the other hand, was left to reckon with her own misguided assumptions and actions. Belle didn't rub it in. She was too classy for that. Instead, she simply smiled, greeted Karen politely, and went on with the evening, leaving Karen to stew in her own discomfort. It was a lesson in respect that Karen wouldn't soon forget. I would have said it right there in front of him. We've met. I assume the Facebook post will be deleted in the next 10 seconds. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.